Shooters, Reloaders, and Conversationalists. Welcome to Pondo Labs. Join us as we talk about the 1911 recoil spring measurement system we developed called Ponder Coil. This project is part of our ongoing interest in studying NRE Precision Pistol, uh, in particular looking at what we can do to lower the cost of entry and participation. We're particularly focused on 9mm and 38 super loads for the center fire line, and uh, we feel we need to dial in the platform for optimal results. We also want to understand the role of recoil springs. We want to match uh, recoil springs to loads, individuals, and uh, pistol characteristics. A key item is to make springs and spring weight controlled variables. For example, this is a, a Springfield Range Officer at 9mm we bought for our project. It was, uh, it was used, but in great condition. Normally, these are delivered without spring buffers with 14-pound springs. But uh, with our measurement system, we're able to determine not only did this have a buffer in it, but it had a 9-pound spring. So if we were to spend a lot of time developing ammunition to make it work in this gun without understanding the spring, and the recoil characteristics, we go light a lot. We could waste a lot of time. Also, when do you replace springs? There's a lot of discussion about that. But take a look at this plot from his gun springs. You can see that even small losses, quarter inch, half inch, in the length of springs can already make significant difference in spring performance. So to understand all these things, we feel we need to start with measurement. The topic of springs can get very complicated, so let's see if we can narrow this down. We're focused on compression type springs. Some of the basic design elements are conventional versus variable, free or captured, be made out of round or flat wire, they could be single or compound, and there's various different ways of treating the ends. Sometimes springs are just re referred to as standard, light, heavy, and so forth. Uh, metal types can be music wire, stainless, chrome silicon, or setup. Also, there's uh, very important manufacturing steps, uh, such as uh, pre-treatments and post-treatments. We're going to revisit an idea called setting. There's uh, two flavors of this, allow for set and preset. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Here's some examples. Here's a single screen uh, made out of flat wire. Here's a compound spring, and you'll notice that uh, the inner spring is wound in the opposite direction of the outer spring. Here's a variable, so you can see how the pitch has changed here. And this is a captured compound, so it's captured right here, and you'll see springs going separate directions. And this is what we call a captured stack spring. So you can see these aren't all 911 springs, but we want to give you a sense of just all the stuff that can come into play with compression springs. Now that we talked about compression springs generally, let's focus down on our specific application, which are 1911 recoil springs for the 5 inch government shown here. Our focus is going to be the conventional spring as originally was envisioned and designed by Browning back in the early part of the 20th century. Single wound spring here. Uh, there's still a lot of design things the spring manufacturers take into consideration. The uh, coil inside and outside, wire thickness, uh, coil pitch and wind direction, and the number of coils, both total and active. And then the, uh, the ends. Typically, the springs we're going to deal with will have an open end and a closed end. We're interested in a set of measurements listed here. Free length. It's the length of the spring just as it sits. Solid height is the uh, length of the spring when it's compressed all the way down so it can't move any further. That's considered the solid height. We're also interested in the spring rate. And this is if in the linear region of a spring, and that's the pounds force per inch. And then we're also interested in preload. Anyone that's a it's field stripped in 1911 and taking out the, uh, uh, the front bushing has got a very dramatic example of what preload's all about, and that's measured in pound force. We're also very interested in the load point. 
this is the height for the load rating. For the five inch government, that was originally envisioned as one inch and 625 mils. This is an important number. We'll revisit that more in the future. Last but not least is load rating. What folks understand is the spring weight and that's in pounds force. We'd like to pass on a very important safety point. It's important that you always have a solid height. In other words, when the spring is fully compressed is less than the point where you're operating it. So in other words, the stroke has to be uh, you know, not down to the point of, of a solid height. If that happens, very bad things happen. And uh, this is often referred to as coil bind. And uh, if you put spring buffers in or you change your springs a lot, it's very, very important to understand what the stroke length is and make sure that that uh, stroke length is less than the solid height of the spring. Here's a still photo of the pounder coil test setup. Here's the uh, test fixture mounted in the shop vise. You can see these are adjustable markers for the displacement one and displacement two. And right along in here, you can see the adjustable load point stop. This is a, we call the Kunin safety pin to make sure this thing doesn't come flying out at us. This is an eight inch caliper set for measuring free lengths and then another six inch caliber for measuring the other lengths. This is the uh, Shippo force gauge. This is the model FG3009, which is rated out to a thousand newtons or 220 pounds force. Uh, we didn't buy this. Uh, this is laboratory grade uh, force gauge. We didn't buy it ex exclusively for this. You can see in the background, this is our pounder press bullet seating setup and we normally use it for um, compression measurement here, but uh, we can also be using it in tension here, as we'll demonstrate. And then we have the Windows laptop running the EDMS software for gathering data in real time. And then we use uh, Microsoft Excel for uh, post-run analysis. This is what a pounder coil test run looks like. This is the real-time graph. As you compress the spring, what's called the restoring force from the force gauge is in the opposite direction. That's why force is shown up here as negative. So once we start pulling on the gauge, uh, we go to displacement one, down here displacement two, we measure those forces, and this is the uh, force at the load rating, and we're done. So the extension force is plotted as time. These two points are, are chosen to be within the linear region of the spring, generally 20 here, 80 there. And then of course the load rating at the load point. So the differences in forces over the differences in displacements gives us spring rate in pounds of force for interest. The uh, test run also stores the data out in the Excel CSV file for later analysis. In this case, we just plot sample size. Since this is running at 10 samples a second, you can see uh, 14 seconds here is 140 points here. Uh, we've also had the provision to put a smoothing filter on this uh, to help us pick these different points. Uh, but we find that that's generally not necessary. Uh, eyeballing this off the uh, real-time chart generally does the job. It's important to remember when you get a new spring and it's probably adjusted for set. You need to draw that spring down all the way down to the solid height to take out the set before you measure the free length. Uh, once that's been done, you don't have to do that uh, as you're making measurements afterwards. In many of our previous Pounder Lab videos, we like to tell you a little bit about the folks that have contributed to the advancement of science for the shooting sports. Many of these folks are early in the 19th and 20th century. But for this project, we got to go all the way back to the 17th century with a physicist named Robert Hooke, who gives us Hooke's Law. The restoring force is equal to the spring rate time displacement. And this applies over the linear region of the spring, which is pretty easy to do. 
In the sciences, we do what we call track units. So as we work through our equations, we want to make sure everything comes out the way it should. So we often talk about spring weight as pound force. But if you look at Hooke's law, we have spring rate, which is pound force per inch. Well, we need inch in the numerator to cancel that out. So really, the correct way to state a recoil spring is a spring weight of uh, X number of pounds forced at a load point, Y in inches. As we mentioned earlier, if for the five inch government, we just accept that as one inch at 625 mils, you're fine. But we think it's important to remember that that has to be part of this equation for accurate representations of your spring weights. So uh, pounder coil allows us uh, to do simple, fast measurements. It's, it's uh, accurate, reproducible and we're able to demonstrate Hooke's Law. So here we have a plot of spring rate versus spring weight at the load point. And you can see this is a good fit, very linear line. Down here are uh, springs for uh, uh, wad cutter type guns. Here's conventional. And up here are some springs for the Kunin 357 Magnum. We have good linearity. Now, in this kind of an expression, we can go ahead and uh, take out the y-intercept because zero spring rate gives us zero spring weight. And so we simply have the uh, spring rate times a constant to give us spring weight. So basically, we've demonstrated that the 1911 recoil springs we are studying are Hookian, word for the day, which means they're linear elastic. We developed pounder coil as a research tool as part of our projects to understand and improve 1911 platforms. And we're testing spring for our project goals. This isn't a industry standard method or really sort of a vendor or manufacturer quality control effort. We always recommend you talk to your spring supplier. Uh, be on the lookout for a demo of pounder coil that's in the works. And here's another example of applying analytics to the shooting sports. We can take uh, things that we're familiar with and in industry knowledge and shooter inputs, uh, and that helps us design simple equipment uh, for measurements and then uh, using simple statistical techniques, it gives us time, a faster time to solutions and new insights. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jacob Young, our lead metallurgist, for his contribution and contributions from uh, Mark Cassatt with uh, with uh, Ismi Springs for valuable conversations with him. Please uh, look at our website and our YouTube channel for uh, uh, new videos and new information on our projects and then uh, uh, go from there. This completes our presentation and as you're thinking about subscribing, please look over these important notes and disclaimers. They're here for your protection and ours. Thanks for watching. Be safe. See you soon.